Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There are some names in the world that are so well-known, but they're well-known for their innovation, their success, their invention. They're well-known for what they did and not so much for who they were. So, for instance, if I said Dyson, would you immediately start thinking about the individual, the man, his life story, or would you think about the sleek, popular vacuum. If I said Edison, would you think about the man and his whole life journey, or would you simply think the light bulb and how it changed the world? These men are known, again, by what they did. What if I told you that Dyson, before he came up with his first successful vacuum, he failed 5,127 times? 5,127 failed attempts at a vacuum. Edison is quoted as saying that he didn't fail a thousand times. He just learned a thousand new ways that a light bulb wouldn't work before he landed on his success. It's safe to say that both of these inventing legends failed. They had failures. They made mistakes. They probably saw some ridicule along the journey that they would never do what they were seeking to do. They had their disheartening moments, and yet they learned in doing. They kept trying. They kept learning. And now, we know those names for their success, not for their failures or their mistakes or their slip-ups. We know them for what they have, in fact, done. So my question for all of you today is what if I said your name? What if I said my own name? What would we be known for? Or maybe more broadly, what if I just said Christians? The church? Would we be known for our successes or would we be known for our mistakes, our slip-ups, our failures? I hope we'd be, learned, we'd be known for something greater. Something Christians should be known for love. So far in our sermon series, we've talked about a lot of stuff when it comes to discipleship, about taking that first step. We've talked about how we need to take the first step in discipleship, why we should care about taking that first step, and the fact that the time is now to go out and to be disciples. It's not time to wait. And now it's time we kind of talk about what it is to go out and love the world. Now, I know talking about discipleship and love, it's easier said than done, but I kind of wrestled with that for a while. Why? Why is it so easy to talk about discipleship and love in this world, here and now, but then when we go out, it gets complicated, and we struggle to wrap our heads around it, and sooner or later, we kind of fall shy of the goal because it's just so much. And then it struck me, I think the reason that discipleship and sharing love with our neighbor gets complicated is because I'm involved. And no offense to all of you, but it's because you're involved. It's because we're involved in the, the equation. You see, we are broken individuals. And anything that comes only from in here is bound to have brokenness in it too. When we get involved, things get complicated. And when we try and create this idea of discipleship, or most importantly, when we try to create love only in here, only in my own being, if it's coming from a broken person, you can bet it's going to have some brokenness in it. And unfortunately, when it comes from only in here, it's bound to be tainted with sin, and it's going to fall short. I can't speak for all of you, but I know when I try and create love only here, it's going to be a little selfish. I'm only going to share my love with the people that I actually want to share with. If my love comes only from in here, chances are it's going to be a little fearful. Well, I know my strengths and my weaknesses, and I don't know if I want to go out and share love in that way or this way. I, I, I got my wheelhouse. I'm going to stick with it. And maybe worst of all, when love comes only from in here, sometimes it can be hateful. Sometimes it can be angry. Sometimes it can say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. Worst of all, sometimes it can mean going out 
and hating the sin and the sinner equally. And that is not our call. That is not what we're supposed to do as disciples when we share our love with this world. Friends, if we're going to go out into the world, if we're going to take all of these steps, if we're going to continue on this discipleship series or live our lives as disciples, then we need to stop here and first understand what it is to actually love. What it is to live and to learn in love and go out and share it with everyone we meet. And thankfully that's exactly what we get in our epistle reading for today from 1 John. We're going to learn exactly where love comes from, what it looks like, and where we fit into the puzzle. So John is writing to all believers in his epistle, and and like all of scripture, it's written to us today. It's for us to take to heart, to live by. Now within his letter, he, he writes deeply, profoundly about true, godly Christian love. He talks about what it looks like, how we should focus on it, but but before he gets too deep, he gives us a little bit of a word of warning about a mistake that we sometimes make, and I want to stop here for a second with you all. He writes this, whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Let that sink in for a second. Because if we don't begin here, if we don't start on these words, then the rest of this is doomed to fall short. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. True, Christian, whole, perfect love, it all stems from God. If we want to share love with this world, then we need to know God. And we need to worship Him because He is love first and foremost. If we want to take steps in the right direction, we need to stop here. We need to wrestle with what that really means. It means that love doesn't originate here in this little box in my chest. Love doesn't start here. It's not created here. I know this next part might ruffle some feathers because we use it a lot, but love is not something that you just fall into. Love isn't something that you just fall out of. It's not something you trip over or discover. It's not going to be found here in a natural source. Love isn't here. It's in God, and he gives it to us. Dear friends, love originates from God because God is love. That may sound like a simple statement, but it is deeply profound. I mean, really, unpack it with me here for a second. Before there was light and darkness, before there was any sort of creation, before anything was in existence, there was God. And if God is love, that means there was love before anything else in this entire world. And that means everything that came to be, everything God created was created in love. Love is the source of all things. If God creates, he creates in love. If he guides us, he guides us in love. When he judges, he judges in love. And of course, when he saves and redeems and sanctifies, he does so in love. There is no perfect love outside of the love that God pours out on this world because God is love. Love is God, period. We say that we're called children of God. Well, if God is love, then why don't we change it? We are children of love. And just as John says in his letter, if we can stand any chance, we need to love God and then we can love one another. We got to reside in him. We need to learn in him. We need to live in him as he lives in us, receiving his love. So that we go out as disciples. It's his love that we are sharing with everybody we meet. Now I know I'm still talking about the big ideas. This is a discipleship series after all, and you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's great, but, but what does it look like? How can I actually do it? What's the tangible, physical representation of this love that you want me to share? Well, once again, if we try and conjure up anything from just in here, it's coming from a sinful person, and it's bound to have some sin in there. But John says that God showed his love in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. 
So if you're tracking with me, God is the origin of love. That means that Jesus is the manifestation of love. He is the physical, perfect representation that we can reach out and we can see and we can understand. Jesus is the real presence of God's love in this world. So that means true, godly, Christian, perfect, whole love. Looks like a man who is also God coming into this world and living to teach, to share, to preach, to love a broken people. It looks like a willingness to love in the face of hate. It even looks like going to the cross, suffering and death for a world that was calling for that very death undeservingly. But most importantly, it's a love that calls for forgiveness. Even from the cross. Even for a sinful people, while they commit the very sin, it is forgiveness day in and day out. It is deep, profound, uncomprehendable love. This is God's love. Fellow believers, we're called We're called to be driven out into this world to be disciples and to share Christ with the world. And that means we've been called to selfless love. And again, I know that it's easy to say here and it gets complicated out there. But just as Christ is the cornerstone of this church, of all churches, he also needs to be the cornerstone of our very love for our neighbor. He needs to be the cornerstone of our life and whatever it is we go out and we share. And that means first and foremost, our love needs to be selfless. Jesus sacrificed himself. His apostles denied themselves. The church needs to be willing to give of itself to love those in this world who need to be loved. And that means everybody. And that means that our love, it it shouldn't be afraid It shouldn't try to hide away. It shouldn't seek to gain anything selfishly. And of course, it should not be hateful. It should simply seek to go and to be shared with everybody who will listen. Jesus loves every sinner deeply. He loves every broken individual deeply. You and me, and that is why he was willing to die for us. And I need to stop here for a second. And I need to clarify something. When I say that we need to go out and we need to love this world selflessly and share Christ, I don't mean that we need to go out and love all the sins. But I also don't want us to go out and hate the sinner. If we're going to get it right, we need to start looking at this world through the eyes of our loving God. We need to see people for who they are. Beloved children of God, even if they know it or not, they are in fact children of God who he loves and wants and redeems. We need to start looking at our neighbors, the entire world, for who they are, broken individuals who deserve to be loved. The same as we deserve to be loved by our God who has done everything. Our call is to learn in this love. It is to learn in God. It is to share Christ with a broken world day in and day out. It's to share God's love for the children that he wants, that is everybody in this world, whoever was, is, or will be. That's the core of this entire series. If you get nothing else from this entire discipleship series, get this. We need to be Christ's disciples. We need to be willing to take our steps outside of the comfort zone, outside of our homes, and we need to be willing to be self-sacrificial, loving those who we meet. And in life, that looks like a lot of different things. Maybe it looks like having the conversations and hearing the stories with our neighbors, even when our schedule is busy, and it feels inconvenient. Maybe it means going and helping out and serving where there is a need. Maybe it means opening a spot at your dinner table even when it's just not quite the right time for somebody who needs a meal and needs to feel loved. Truthfully, it means walking along people in their struggles. And to take it a step further, it means struggling along people 
in their struggles and loving them all the same, all the time. We don't encourage the sin, but we love the sinner. We love our brothers and sisters in Christ who know that they are saved, and we love those who don't know they're saved yet, but we can tell them. We bring Christ's love everywhere we go. And we give everything we have just as he gave everything he had. Now finally, John calls, uh, calls those he's writing to, to action. He says this, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Now this doesn't mean that God needs something from us. He didn't, didn't create us because he had a need, but rather it means that his love is made complete through us. God's the origin of love. Christ was the manifestation of his love. And that love is made complete when it is poured out upon us each and every day. And then that love, God's love, is poured out through us each and every day. Let us live in God's grace and his love as his beloved children. Let us come to the cross in our failures and our mistakes and witness his deep and profound love for us. Let us come and receive the blessing of the Lord's Supper, receiving his forgiveness and love. And ultimately, let us go out and share it. Because to be honest, if I'm going to fail, if I'm going to fail like Dyson and Edison failed, I want to go out and fail with courage and confidence. I want to run out full force into this world with God's love, and if I fall flat on my face, so be it. But then I'll wake up tomorrow and try and fall flat on my face again and love not all the same. There's a song by Jars of Clay, and the, the title of the song is, They'll Know We Are Christians By Our Love. And the refrain of this song is just that, that the world's going to know that we are Christians by our love. We know God by his love. Imagine if Anago, Wisconsin, knew Peace Lutheran by our love. Or maybe let's make it a little broader. What if the entire world knew Christians by our love? A love that is ultimately the love of God. The time is now for us to continue to learn in God and to learn in this love. The time is now to receive His grace. And the time is now to share that love with this world. God's love is here. It is present. It is poured out on us each and every day. And the time is now because the world needs to know that God is love. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for your presence here, for the opportunity to worship you as you draw us closer in faith. Help us to go forth and share your love with all who we meet. All this we ask in your Son's name. Amen.